So let us look how we can create a VPC in the AWS Management Console. So the first thing I want to do is to go to my services, then I will select VPCs. Now you could use the VPC wizard similar to what we did in the Cloud Practitioner class. But now I want to do this VPC creation from scratch, just to understand most of the VPC component that we are using to build our own private network in AWS. Understanding the VPC is very important to pass the solution architect exam so i will click now in the your vpc from the virtual private cloud then i will click on create a vpc i'm going to create a vpc and i will give it a name and in this name i'm going to call it demo vpc now the cidr block that i want to use is going to be 10.0.0.0 with a slash 16. this means that this vpc is going to have about 65,536 available IP so I could segment that VPC further into more subnet. Now let me create a VPC. Now about the default tenancy you can use a dedicated tenancy or a default one. This means you are going to build a dedicated VPC especially if you want to meet a regulation requirement or a licensing requirements. Now for this demo we're going to use default. Click on create a VPC. Now once you create a VPC the VPC will appear here in your VPC's console. Select the VPC and now from the actions menu I want to enable DNS host names. This will give any EC2 I launch inside this VPC a DNS name. Now let me create in that demo VPC I let me create a new subnet and I will call this my public subnet. So I'm going to create a subnet, select the demo VPC, give the subnet name public subnet and let me place this in the first availability zone of US East 1A. You can see I have six availability zone, which means I could create six available public subnet for each AZ. For this subnet, I'm going to give this IP address 10.0.0.1 with a slash 24, which means I'm going to get up to 2 to the power 8 available IPs minus 5, which are the 5 IPs reserved for AWS. Now let me create this subnet. Now I want to select my subnet and from the action menu, I want to do modify auto assign IP address. So from action, edit subnet setting, enable auto assign public IP address. Then I click on save. Let me next create a private subnet. So I'm going to select the demo VPC. I will call this subnet a private subnet and this is will be also in my first availability zone and I will give it the IP address 10.0.2.0 with a slash 24. Click on create. Now let us create an add gateway because I want now my public subnet if I launch an EC2 instance in my public subnet I want those EC2 instance to have both connection to the internet inbound and outbound. So let me click on a create an internet gateway. I will call it demo IGW and create an ad gateway. Now, if we go back, we will see from the action menu of the internet gateway that I just created that I can attach this to a specific VPC. So from actions attached to a VPC, you can select the demo VPC. You could also use that command line interface if you are using the CLI to attach a specific VPC to this internet gateway. Now let us go to the route table and we want to configure the route table. Now be careful when you go to the route table, you must be sure that this route table belongs to the demo VPC because most likely you will have a default VPC created in your region by AWS. So I'm going to select the route table with main equal yes in the VPC, the VPC ID with demo VPC. Now let me edit this and I will call this public route table. Now it's a good practice and I always prefer to use the main equal yes for my private route table. But if you want to use it for your public route table similar to this demo, feel free to do so. Now in the routes, you will find that this route table is telling my VPC that any EC2 wants to communicate inside the VPC network, they need to go and use the destination local. If I want them to use my internet gateway for anything else because this is a public route table, 
I need to select any IP. Now the destination will be Internet Gateway, and I will be able to select my DIM IGW and save the changes. Now in the subnet association, I want to point now my public subnet to my public route table. And this is from now on, this subnet will be act as a public subnet because it has a destination route to the internet gateway. Now let us go back and create a NAT gateway because I want my NAT gateway to be used by my private instances. When you click on create NAT gateway, give it the name demo. NAT. Now this NAT will be placed on my private in my public subnet and it will be used for my private instances. So I'm going to allocate an elastic IP for the interface that I will place on the public subnet and it will have also a private IP used by my private instances. Now if you go to the route table, click on create route table and I will call this a private route table and let me now put it in demo VPC and create. Now in the routes of this private route table, I need to edit, add another route for any IP. Now this should go and take the traffic to my NAT gateway, which is the one I just created, demo NAT, and then I save the changes. For subnet association, I need to edit the subnet associations and I will select now the private subnet which means any EC2 instance running in the private instance will use the NAT gateway in order to reach the internet. Now let me create a bastion host. Before I create a bastion host, I need to create a security group. And this is where most students make a mistake when they create a security group. When you click on create a security group, you need to specify where this security group in which VPC. So I'm going to call this demo security group and this is will allow SSH to my private EC2 instances in private subnet. Now here where most students make mistakes, they select the default because by default AWS console will give you the default VPC and select the demo VPC. Add a new rule and this is will be SSH and let me make it anywhere because I want to show you one simple thing here before we carry on create a VPC security group. Now let us go to the EC2s and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch a private server in this private subnet and I will show you that we have no way to access it from our personal computer or from the internet. So we need to do something else which is creating a bastion host. So let us see why you need a bastion host. Launch now an instance. I'm going to select Linux 2. I will keep it with the free tier T2 Micro. And now I will place it in my demo VPC in my private subnet. And I, even if you auto assign public IP, this is going to be useless because that public IP, it won't be reachable because it's act and work behind the NAT gateway. Click add. Now for security group, I'm going to select the demo security group, review, launch. And I will launch this with a new key pair. I'm going to call this key pair demo. If you are using Linux and Mac, RSA will be good. If you are using Windows, ED25519 is better because this is will give you not a PIM file, a PPK file. Download the key pair. This is will go to my download folder and launch the EC2 instance. If I open now my terminal or even potty for Windows and I want to access that EC2 instance, I won't be able to do so. Why? Go to that EC2. You will see that this EC2 now, after it became running, it will get only a private IP address. It won't get a public IP address. Even if it does get a public IP address, this is placed on a demo VPC in the private subnet, so I can't reach it from the internet. So what is the solution for this launch? A new passion host. It will be T2 Micro. This is will be in my demo VPC, in my public subnet. I don't have anything here to specify, no user data, because this is will be only like a jump box. I want to connect to it via SSL. And from that passion host, I want to use that passion host to access my EC2 instance in the private subnet. Click add tag, put name here, and call this bastion host. Now for security group, I'm going to select the creation of a new security group. I will call this bastion host because I want this security group to be the source of the traffic. Allow my PC to access bastion 
host and here I will put only my IP address review launch I will use now different key pair and I will call this passion host to access because this is will give me more control and more security that if I get the passion host key leaked or hacked still the key for my private instances is not going to be affected by that and launch an EC2 instance if you view your instances now you will be able to connect to this passion host from your PC but then you need to access from the bastion host you need to access the private server let me call this private web server for example so we can understand how bastion host works now if I open my terminal now and I go to my download folder where I put where I put my bastion host files I need to do the following ch mode 400 and the first thing I need to do is bastion host.pem file to give this permission and now if I want to connect to my bastion host I could use multiple things I could use the EC2 instance connect use the, SS, the session manager or the SSH client so the SSH client will look like this the command it's SSH minus I bastion host.pem the user at the public DNS of this EC2. Now I want just to verify that I can access the bastion host. Verify that this is yes. And now I can access the bastion host. I could know that if you go back to your bastion host, in your bastion host, you can see that I am inside the private IP address of the bastion host. Now from here, if I have at this machine, if I have the other key which is the demo.pem file key I could basically access the private web to from the bastion host I could access the private web server however there is a better way to do this now for Windows there is another video you need to see how to configure a potty and the P agent in Linux and Mac things are really simple you mainly need to add those keys to your SSH agent and SSH agent will pass those keys to the bastion host and the bastion host will be able to use them to connect to the private server to do that all you need to do guys is SSH minus add minus K and let me add the two keys so I don't need to specify SSH minus I now I need two keys I need SSH minus add minus K and let me add first the bastion host key now let me also add the other key which is the demo key ch mode and now demo key.pem file I will add it and now if I do SSH EC2 dash user at the public IP or the public DNS of my passion host I will be able to connect so let me just use the public DNS so you can see that it is the same command that I used before but without minus E I had a typo there so instead of having SSH I have SHH so let me change the H now and we will be good SSH minus A EC2 user at the public DNS name of my bastion host so I am now inside the bastion host from the bastion host if I want to connect to my private web server now I need to get the private IP address of the web server so all I need to do is SSH EC2 user at the private IP of the server and I will be able now to access the private web server how I can verify this look to the EC2 user at the host name is the IP the private IP name of this EC2 in essence so go to the private web server you can see that now I am inside the private web server in the private server so this is why we need a bastion host and this is how we build and create a VPC thank you for seeing this demo and see you in the next one